Good morning and happy Sabbath. Thank you for joining us for another virtual worship experience here at Metro. Today, we're asking you to take a group picture or take a selfie and let us know what you're grateful for and add us at Metro SDA. Today, the pastor will leave you with a word that will remain in your spirit and rest in your soul. Let's get started. Good morning, good morning, Metro and family and friends. Here we are ready to give God glory because he is wonderful. He is. The young people and I are here together today to tell you. Come on. Bread of life, Savior, Redeemer. You are wonderful Counselor, Holy One. Say. Bread of life, Savior, Redeemer. You are And heir of all living things. Hey. Jehovah Jireh, Elohim. You are high priest and heir of all living hey. things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you are. Come on, put your hands together. <laughs>
amazing. Ha! It's so amazing. It's so amazing. Your love for me. Your love for me. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. Your sacrifice for me. For every blessing. For every blessing. I don't deserve your love, your tender mercies, if not for your grace, where would I be? Come on, lift up your praise unto the Lord, make it a vertical one. So amazing, so amazing. Oh, your sacrifice for every blessing, for every blessing. Give unto me, give unto me for every valley. You use strengthen me. Come on, say it. I don't deserve. You know what? Your tender mercy. Tell them, if not for your grace, where would I? Oh, I stand amazed at I stand amazed at your glory. I stand amazed at your strength. So amazing. Stand amazed. Oh, 
to join us in our, our service of giving. There are four ways that you can give. Cash app, Adventist giving app, online, or even through the mail. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Be with the offering, dear Heavenly Father. May it do your work. Bless and keep us. In your name I pray, amen. Shall we pray together? Loving Lord, you have blessed us. We are grateful for the love you provide. We're grateful that you speak to us, you walk with us, you talk with us, God. You don't deny us and we're grateful. Father, I'm asking that for every person listening and praying along that you would do something special for their heart. Father, I don't know what every person is praying about, what they're concerned about, what they're praying towards, but I know that every person is praying about something. And I ask, Lord, that you would continue to allow the courage in their hearts to live so that they always come back to you. Father, I ask that you would bless this church. Father, we prioritize prayer, love, and service. I ask, Father, please, please, that in this church, you would magnify your spirit, that you would allow the glory of God to just burst at the seams. Father, equip us. God, give us the strength and the ability. Even as we're getting closer to the winter months, I pray that our service doesn't stop. Father, thank you so much for giving us leaders and members and children and, and a church campus. God, thank you for giving us the ability to still minister to and to still connect with one another, even in the distances that we are. I ask God that you would. Bless our hearts, bless our ears, bless our understanding even as we continue to study the word. Father, may the sermon go forth as you see fit. Help us to understand. And may the Holy Spirit make the difference in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear! The hour I first believed. i 
good to me His word, my hope secures He will my shield and portion be As long as life endures shall soon dissolve like snow the sun for me to shine but God who called me here below will be forever mine will be Metro family and all our virtual viewers all around the world. I'm so glad to be back sharing the word with you again. And so much has happened in the past few weeks. Horrific earthquake in Haiti, terrorism and conflict in Afghanistan, hurricanes and tornadoes in the U.S., and chaos in our schools due to the Delta variant. Lord, have mercy. What's going on? We need a word from the Lord. Family, if you've been watching all of what's been going down, you've got to be asking yourself, what is God saying in this season of crisis? What is God's message for my life in this critical moment? Well, the Bible says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I want to share a word from God with you today that's going to enlighten your understanding, encourage your spirit, and strengthen your resolve. Come on, you need strength to make it through these crazy times. And the word of God is your strength. Would you turn with me in the word to Revelation chapter 7, verses 13 through 17? And then after that, we're going to jump to Revelation chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. It's Revelation 7, verse 13 through 17, and then 15, verses 1 through 4. Revelation 7 says, and one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, 
and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. My God. Uh, Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And watch this, it says, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Glory, hallelujah. Chapter 15, verses one and four says, and I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb saying, great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest." Revelation 7 verse 14 says, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. I want to speak with you on the message for just a few moments. Can you stand the test? Can you stand the test? Would you pray with me? Mighty God, we thank you that you have given us the word in these very trying and distressing seasons. Oh God, your word still gives us guidance and direction, and we seek your word, God, today just for that. Someone needs you to enlighten them. Someone needs you to open up their mind so they can have clarity for what is happening in the world around them. Spirit of the living God, speak to us right now. Holy Ghost, have your way and give us your divine insights so that we can be on your path. We thank you, O God, in advance in Jesus' name, amen. Family, it doesn't take a genius to realize that we are in a season of unprecedented global conflict and great difficulty. The world is in one great mess right now, and it doesn't look like we're exiting this mess anytime soon. The fluidity of the season makes it difficult to plan from week to week or even from day to day. Back in July, many of us thought that we were done with the pandemic, but Delta has snapped us back into the horror of death and crisis that we experienced just last winter. And folks are crazier than ever. People are assaulting flight attendants on planes. People are getting into fights with employees at Walmart. Or I read one article the other day where a father walked into a school without a mask, and when a little girl walking in the hallway asked him to wear a mask because it was the school rule, he pushed her to the floor. What is happening? What's going on? There's a spirit of fear and anger and hostility that has been unleashed all around this country. The demons of violence and selfishness have been loosed around the world, and these demonic principalities are using ignorance and uncertainty to drive men and women downward into a chaotic spiral of incivility and depravity. Everybody's mad. (laughs) Everybody's got an attitude. Everybody's on a hair trigger and ready to snap. 
Everybody's ready to give somebody a piece of their mind. Everybody's ready to throw them hands. A year and a half of crisis and pandemic have brought all of our emotions of panic and anxiety to the surface. This is a season of great difficulty. I visited a member in the ER last week at Children's Hospital, and the ER was packed with children with COVID cases. I'm there watching kids hooked up to oxygen and struggling to breathe. Here in Maryland last week, the flood waters from Ida came so quickly that they took the lives of several people while they were sleeping in their apartments. <laughs> My God. Why, preacher? What's going on? <laughs> Answer, there's an angry devil in these streets. Peter says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Uh, Jesus puts it plainly in John 10, verse 10. He says, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. <laughs> Steal, kill, and destroy. There is a devil that is hell-bent on your destruction. There is an adversary that is laser-focused on your demise. There is a cosmic terrorist that is trying to take out as many human lives as possible. Why all this difficulty? Answer, the devil is out to destroy you. He's out to destroy you. He's out to destroy your family and your loved ones. And he uses four tools. He uses the tool of deception. His primary weapon is the weapon of deception, deceit. He used it in heaven, and he's still using it today. The Bible calls him the father of lies. Are you hearing me, somebody? And 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9 and 10 lets us know that in the last day, there would be a lying spirit that would be loosed around the world. And this lying spirit would deceive those who don't have a living connection with the Holy Ghost. People would be brought under what the Bible calls strong delusions and would be more interested in lies than the truth. And family, that's what we're living under today. Lies. Folk trying to overturn elections. Deception. Folk passing laws against wearing masks, virtually ensuring that this virus spreads to the most vulnerable. Have you seen the mess in Florida? Have you seen what's happening in states where there is not much vaccination? Deception. Uh, folk are now taking horse pills to cure themselves of COVID. Deception. Man, it's getting worse and worse. Last year, they were drinking bleach. Deception. The adversary is working overtime to ensure that people are flooded with so much misinformation and disinformation that they cannot make an intelligent decision to their own demise. Now they're out there saying that the vaccine is the mark of the beast. Have you heard that? They're saying the vaccine is the mark of the beast. My God. And family, a Holy Spirit-inspired reading of Scripture immediately reveals that this idea is both theologically incorrect and contextually irresponsible. First of all, the symbolism of Revelation 13, verse 16 and 17, informs us that the mark of the beast is a symbolic description of one's mental allegiance and personal commitment to satanic power. The mental allegiance is symbolized by the forehead, and the personal commitment is symbolized by the actions of the hand. It's not a shot administered by a pharmacist. My God. And we've got a bunch of folk running around not getting vaccinated because somebody said it's the mark of the beast. 
But watch this. <laughs> then you're not reading and studying the word daily for yourself. <laughs> you're not seeking God every day for a fresh impartation of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you're not worshiping God in your home with your family. You're not in daily spiritual communion with the Father. You're not actively sharing faith and witness to anyone. Uh, you're not engaged in mission and service for the least of these. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Come on, somebody. You're already already deceived. You're already falling away. You've already got blinders on. Turn off CNN. Turn off MSNBC. Turn off Fox News. Turn off TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and get in your prayer closet and start crying out to God, what must I do to be saved? The devil uses deception to destroy men and women. And if you're straddling the fence of popular culture and personal feelings instead of daily surrender and Bible study, you are absolutely defenseless against an angry devil. But not only does the enemy use deception, his second tool is distraction. Somebody say distraction. If he cannot deceive you, then his next effort is to distract you. Come on, look at your uh, virtual neighbor. Tell somebody in the chat, don't get distracted. If he can get you distracted long enough to pull you just far enough away from where you're not hearing God daily. If he can just get you in a routine where you're too busy for worship, if he can get you working so hard trying to make ends meet so that you don't have time for a real devotional life, if he can just get you caught up in the drama of relationships that consume your mind and emotions, uh, leaving you no time for spirit, if he can distract you long enough uh, to get your eyes off your father and just focus your eyes on imperfect and hypocritical people. Hmm. He doesn't have to outright deceive you. You're too smart for that. Uh, but if he can just distract you, if he can just distract you with trifling, inconsistent, and legalistic church folk, uh, if he can just distract you with slave driving supervisors, uh, if he can just distract you with petty acquaintances and earthly minded friends, uh, if he can just distract you with relationship worries and stresses, uh, if he can just distract you with paying the bills and the unending pursuit of the almighty dollar, he he will have accomplished his destructive purposes all the same. If he cannot deceive you, he will destroy you with his tools of distraction. But now, if he cannot deceive you, and if he cannot distract you, then his next aim is to depress you. The data is in now from this pandemic, and the trend line is showing that suicide is up. Anxiety is up. Mental strain is up. Hopelessness is up. Despair and worry are up. If he cannot deceive or distract you, the enemy's next tactic is to overwhelm you with the difficulties and traumas of life. His aim is to overwhelm you with grief and sorrow and darkness. He wants to get you so distraught and so hopeless and so frustrated and so stressed out that he doesn't have to kill you. He'll watch you kill yourself. Oh, but can I minister to somebody right now? If you find yourself being pulled down by the darkness, oh my God, I declare to you right now, it's time to get in the light. It's time for you to get in the light. Uh, go outside. Go outside in the sun. Go on a walk. Uh, let the sunshine hit your face uh, and let the vitamin D regenerate in your skin. Get some fresh air in your lungs. Inhale and exhale. 
or toss out the soda, the lattes, the caffeine, and go drink some water. Mm. See, the absence of these natural healing elements is throwing off your body's ability to heal itself and facilitating your depression. It's affecting your mind. Start talking. See a therapist. Put some worship music on your playlist and shift the atmosphere of your mind. Come on, family, this is a new day. I will not be defeated. I will not be overwhelmed. I've got a new attitude. I'm changing my state of mind. A devil, you will not depress me. A devil, you will not get the victory over my mind. A devil, you will not play with my emotions. I'm bouncing back from my low place. I'm coming back out of this darkness. I'm coming back from defeat. Uh, uh, Look at your virtual neighbor and tell them, I'm not done yet. Don't count me out just yet. Uh, I still got some fight left in me. Uh, I still got some hope uh, left in me. Uh, I still got some anointing uh, left in me. Uh, I still got some faith uh, left in me. Uh, And if I got to cry my way through it, uh, uh, fuss my way through it, uh, uh, shout my way through it, uh, uh, praise my way through it, uh, uh, press my way through it, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, I'm getting out of this low place uh, and making it to the other side. Come on, somebody put a praise on it. If you need God to raise you up again, uh, uh, put a hallelujah in the atmosphere. Uh, If you need God to turn your situation around, uh, somebody put a praise in the chat right there. Uh, uh, Open up your mouth and bless God if you need the Lord to preserve your mind. The devil tries to deceive you to distract you, and to depress you. Uh, But if all that doesn't work, the fourth tool that the enemy uses is the tool of defeat. The tool of defeat. He wants you to lose at life. (laughs) The enemy will get you to a defeated place in your marriage. Come on, somebody. He'll get you to a place where you failed and can't put the pieces back together again. He'll get you in a defeated place financially, or he'll get you defeated feeling like you'll never reach your goals. Uh, And family, when you're defeated, you feel embarrassed. Your confidence takes a hit. You lose energy, you lose momentum. And, And what I need you to understand, family, is that defeat is a regular part of life. Defeat is a part of life. Defeat is necessary. Hear me, somebody. Defeat is a part of life, but the difference is for the believer, defeat is just a stop along the journey, not the final destination. Well, let me say that again. Defeat is just a stop along the journey, not the final destination. Family, the enemy wants you to believe that this is your final destination so you can throw your hands up and just quit. (laughs) Oh, but the devil is a liar. Don't stay here. Keep moving. (laughs) Don't sit down in frustration uh, and in in, uh, regret, giving up. Keep moving. Divorce is not the end of your story. (laughs) Bankruptcy is not the end of your story. Uh, Losing your job is not the end of your story. Uh, Losing a loved one is not the end of your story. Every setback is a setup for a comeback. uh, And if you hold on to God in your defeated place, uh, uh, God will write a new chapter of purpose and possibility for your life. (laughs) Oh, but the devil wants you to slump down in defeat. Understand, Satan is out to destroy humanity. He's out to destroy you and me, and he uses deception, distraction, depression, and defeat to accomplish his destructive purposes. The pain The hardship and the chaos that you see and feel on a daily basis is the result of his work. 
The Bible says in our text in Revelation 7 and verse 14 that as believers, we would have to walk through a period of great tribulation in the last days. <laughs> great tribulation. And it's the Greek word thlipsis, which simply means affliction or distress. In its context, it can be translated as testing. And so the text can be read, these are they who have come out of great testing. <laughs> Did you catch that? God is saying that at the end of time, the people of God will have to endure a period of great testing. Uh, this feels like a period of great tribulation right now. <laughs> can I get a witness? <laughs> and in this period of great tribulation, I've got to ask you, family, can you stand the test? Can you stand the test? Understand, beloved, tests are meant to reveal something about you. Tests reveal something about you. Tests are meant to exert pressure on you and demonstrate your capacity to endure. And Revelation chapter 6 and chapter 12 and chapter 16 talk about persecution, warfare, famine, poverty, hunger, natural disasters, plagues, and so much more that will engulf the world at the end of time. Great tribulation, great testing. The pain and pressure of the season is so heavy that the saints in Revelation 6.10 literally cry out, how long, God? How long do we have to endure this? <laughs> oh, but family, the good news is that though we are all faced with a great test, Jesus, our older brother, has already given us the answers to the test. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Did you hear what I just said? I said, though it's a difficult test, Jesus, your older brother, has already given you the answer to make it through the test. Jesus has already given you what you need to make it through the season of tribulation. The key to, uh, to making it through the time of testing, the key to making it through the hour of tribulation, the key to passing your test is found right there in Revelation 7 and verse 14. Those who make it through the great tribulation are the ones that have washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. They washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. It's nothing but the blood. Somebody say nothing but the blood. It's nothing but the blood that's going to get you through. It's nothing but the blood that is going to push you through your season. It's nothing but the blood that's going to get you through your difficulty. Is there anybody out there that knows that it's the power of the blood? Oh, I can testify. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood working for me, family. The blood is the answer to your test. The blood is the answer to your season of testing. The blood is the answer to your period of great tribulation. The blood is the power that gets you through your trying season. If you're afflicted, call on the blood. If you're defeated, use the blood. If you're ready to faint, call on the blood. If your family is in a dire place, plead the blood. If your money is funny, call on the blood. If COVID has got you down, cry out the blood. If they're coming after you on the job, scream, shout so heaven can see you and hear you. The blood, the blood, the blood. The blood of Jesus is your answer, family. The blood of Jesus is what will carry you through your test. Nothing but the blood. Oh, thank you, God, for the blood. If it had not been for the shedding of the blood. Oh, beloved, by the time we get to Revelation 15 and verse 2, the Bible describes a new scene 
Oh, thank you, Lord God. Glory to his name. The Bible describes a new scene now in Revelation 15. It doesn't describe the believers like it did in John chapter 6, crying under the altar, dealing with persecution and warfare and famine and poverty. But when you look at Revelation 15, verse 2, now the scene, now the text moves in an upward direction. Oh, I feel like preaching this right here. John the Revelator is shown a picture of the people of of God uh, no longer on earth. <laughs> oh, but they're in the kingdom. And John sees, the Bible says, and he describes it the best way that he can. He sees a sea of glass uh, mingled with fire. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> And as he looks at this sea of glass, uh, he can't even understand what it is. Uh, but he sees now all of a sudden a great multitude of people of all races, all kindreds, all tribes, all tongues, and all people, all manner of people and families. He sees them standing on this sea of glass. Oh, beloved, the Bible says what unites all these people is that they are all standing in victory. <laughs> they have different backgrounds. <laughs> they have different ethnicities. <laughs> they come from different families, but they are all united now because they're standing in victory. Oh, I feel like shouting right now. <laughs> They're standing in victory. The Greek word here is nikao, from where we get the word Nike. And it simply means victorious ones. These victorious ones stand on the sea of glass. And they're singing a song of relief. They're singing a song they're shouting right now. And they're singing, great and marvelous is our God, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are all of your ways, thou King of saints. Can you see it in your sanctified imagination? Can you hear the jubilation in their praise? This is ecstatic worship. Why? Because the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 7 that there's no more tears, uh, there's no more hunger, uh, there's no more pain, there's no more thirst, there's no more weariness, there's no more heartache, there's no more injustice, there's no more pain. And now that they are done with the sorrows and the pain and the deception and the defeat and the depression and the distractions of this old world, now they cast off their crowns before the one who sits before the throne, the Lamb of God, and they go into full out worship. They made it through the test. They made it through the tribulation. They made it through the season of affliction. They made it through the pain and the hardship. Uh, they made it through their period of testing. Uh, they made it through all the hell that the devil threw at them, and they demonstrated a faith that stood the test. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, they were able to make it through their test. Uh, and now they stand on the sea of glass with the harps of God, victorious because they were able to stand their test. Family, can you stand the test? I know it's hard, but can you stand your test? You know, I remembered over the course of my life having to take many tests. I've had to take many tests over the years, and most recently, over the last several years, I've taken so many. I remember just a few years ago when uh, I re-entered school again. I was there at the University of Maryland. I remember the first day when I walked onto that campus, and as I walked on the campus and started to look around, I noticed something was different. I looked to my left, and I looked to my right, and I began to see an age gap, an age difference. I looked and I saw, I said, wait a second, you're about 18, you look maybe 19. When I got into the class, it, it didn't take long for me to realize I was the oldest guy in the class. And, and that was clearly recognizable and I was treated uh, that way. And, and uh, the, the classmates that I had, as they looked at me and as I looked at them, it seemed like I would not be able to keep up with these young, bright, sharp minds. 
After all, I had been out of school for 16 years, but God had called me back. And now this time coming back to school now in my 40s, I'm now realizing that, wait a second, everything has changed. School has changed. It's not what it was 16 years ago. Nobody even uses a book anymore. Everything is electronic. Everything is online. Everything is digital. Uh, they, they've got Blackboard and Google Docs and discussion boards and, and all types of stuff. And, and you know what? As we were in several of our classes, I remember one of the classes, they, they put us into groups. Uh, the teacher put the students into groups. And I could tell that some of the younger students didn't really want me in their group. And I remember staying up late nights now, family, studying. I remember studying, I remember watching YouTube videos uh, on statistics and multivariate regressions and standard deviations. I, I put late nights into completing my assignments and, and reading my chapters and I studied and I worked real hard. And, and family, by the time uh, that we got to the end of the semester, I noticed that some of the same folk that started out with me, we started together, uh, they weren't there by the time we got to the end of the semester. And the day of the final exam, when I sat down to take my exam, I looked around the room and, and I noticed that some of the members uh, in my group that didn't want to be in my group, they weren't here for the final exam. <laughs> oh, help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> and family, when I looked at the exam, I, I looked quickly and scanned it and I said, I think we're going to be all right. Uh, a long story short, I finished that exam. I took it. I walked out the room in confidence. Uh, family, I passed the exam with an A. Matter of fact, I passed passed the class with an A. Matter of fact, I passed all the classes that semester with A's. Uh, and family, what I learned on the other side of that test, uh, what I learned on the other side of that exam is that all of the work, all of the pain, all of the late nights, all of the rough seasons, all of the hardship and the difficulty were simply building my testimony. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. And family, I just stopped by here to tell somebody, uh, you might be feeling pressed down under the weight of your test right now. You might feel like life has handed you an exam that you can't possibly pass. Uh, uh, you might feel like you're not going to make it through this season of burden and hardship. Uh, oh, but I came to encourage you. Uh, the Bible says weeping may endure for a night. Uh, oh, but joy uh, cometh in the morning. Uh, there is a God that sees your struggle uh, and understands your dilemma. And if you don't give up uh, and keep Keep pressing uh, and keep trusting uh, and keep moving uh, and keep believing uh, and keep worshiping uh, and keep grinding. Uh, my Bible says that God will give you what you need to pass your test. He'll give you what you need to pass your test. The family there is a real devil out there and he's using deception, distraction, depression, and defeat to kill and destroy you. Oh, but the good news is you've got a big brother that already fought that old devil and won. Somebody ought to give God some glory right there. You've got an older brother that has promised to give you victory. If you keep pushing in the midst of your test, he'll ensure that you make it to the other side. <laughs> Come on, I want to pray for you right now. Whatever your test is, whatever your difficulty is, whatever it is that you are walking through and experiencing, I believe, I want to believe God with you. And I believe that God is going to carry you through on the other side. Would you bow your heads as I pray for you right now? Mighty God, I pray now, Lord, that your word is true. All of your promises are yes and amen. And you let us know in your word that you are a God that is with us always, even unto the end of the age, which means we are never alone. We are never by ourselves. We never have to figure things out by ourselves because you are a very present help in our times of trouble. Oh God, my prayer for your believer right now that is having faith and they're saying, Lord, I'm trying to believe, help my unbelief. God, give them strength for this critical hour. 
God, give them power for this season of crisis. Lord, be the lifter of their head. I rebuke Satan right now and all of his devices and inventions. And I pray, Lord, that your people would never be deceived, but they would be standing on the truth and clarity that is your word. I pray that your people would never be distracted, but they would keep their eyes fixed on the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the whole world. I pray that your people would never be depressed. I pray, oh God, that they would never be defeated because they recognize that greater is he that is within you than he that's within the world. Empower them, Lord, with everything they need to pass this test. May they use the blood of Jesus to get them through this time of great tribulation. We thank you, God, for making a way. We thank you for being our strength in Jesus' name. Amen. And family, if you just prayed that prayer with me, I want to encourage you right now that you are a survivor. Thank you, God. You're going to make it through this season of testing. You are covered by the blood of the Lamb. And now it's time for you to be baptized. The Bible says, except a man be born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So this is what I want you to do. Take out your phone right now and I want you to text I am ready to 77411 and send us your contact information. We have members of our discipleship team, of our faith team that are ready. They are here. They are ready to pray for you. And they're, uh, they're looking to get you ready for our next baptism. Or you can go to metrosda.org slash I am ready and send us your contact information there. Oh, beloved, today is the day that you can lift up your head. You've got everything that you need to make it through this testing period. You might not have enough, but your God is more than enough. And so hold your head up, stand in the evil day, and know that the blood of Jesus is here to give you all the power you need to make it through your test. Thank you for joining us today. I pray that you got a word for the rest of this week and for the duration of your life. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I pray that you have a blessed day and a wonderful week. God bless.